Uh, before we start, I'd like to know if any of you know what Launchpad is. Uh, if you've had a chance to use Launchpad at all in some facility, whether you have a Launchpad account, something like that, can you do a quick raise of hands so that I can probably tailor my talk? Okay. Mostly people in the first few rows then? Okay, fine. Uh, I'm a software engineer, the Launchpad team at Canonical, and uh, this is my Launchpad profile, and if you have any questions or feature requests or bug reports or things that you need help with Launchpad, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my Launchpad profile also lists other ways to contact me and also my team, so you can always do that. Uh, I'm a free and open source software enthusiast. I've been using Linux since 2007. Uh, Debian Sarge and Ubuntu Feisty Font were my first distributions, and I've been using Linux ever since. Uh, full time. And a recent hobby of mine is that I've been into self hosting, meaning I try to run, uh, uh, maintain my own website, servers, email servers, and everything of use, particularly within my home network, so that I'm not really dependent on the internet or Service providers, the cloud providers. So this is my recent passion. Let's talk about Launchpad. Uh, in this section, I would like to cover some details uh, in such a way that even those who don't know what Launchpad is, you get a good sense of what Launchpad might be, so that you can follow along for the rest of the talk. Um, so the question is, what's Launchpad? Some people might say, hey, Launchpad is a code hosting and collaboration platform for open source software. Uh, some people might say it's the platform for Ubuntu development, meaning all the Ubuntu packages are developed using Launchpad, they're published using Launchpad. Some people might say, hey, Launchpad has PPAs, meaning I want to install some software on uh, Ubuntu, and there are some PPAs which provide the software, and Launchpad provides it. Some people might say, hey, Launchpad is a bug tracker that I use to report bugs in the window. And some people might say, hey, I have my own projects on Launchpad. I use the mailing list feature to be able to con communicate with the developers and the users of my project. And some people might say, hey, I'm using Launchpad to translate my open source project into various languages. Uh, but the reality is Launchpad is all these and much more. So let me quickly go over the history of Launchpad. The first commit to Launchpad was sometime in June of 2024. Uh, at that time, there was no Ubuntu, so development on Launchpad started at Canonical around the same time as development on Ubuntu, so it was a 20 year old product uh, and project. And it has over 150,000 commits by more than 200 people within and outside of Canonical from the community. And it, it has hundreds of thousands of lines of code, a lot of components, it's a complex piece to uh, run and maintain. Back when Launchpad started development, there was no bazaar, there was no Git. You didn't have decent modern code review tools. You didn't have modern bug trackers. So Launchpad was kind of a pioneer in the space where Launchpad had to create a lot of things from scratch. <laughs> Uh, these days, Launchpad does many things. I've tried to list some uh, 11 keywords corresponding to the things that Launchpad does now. So Launchpad provides you a way to host your projects and the code of their or code of the projects uh, using Git, using Bazaar, similar to like GitHub, GitLab of these days. It also provides a bug tracker. It provides the ability to do translations. Uh, in addition to project, if you want to distribute a collection of applications together, like a distribution uh, named Ubuntu. Launchpad also has features and abilities to allow you to do that. There are some downstream distributions of Ubuntu which also use Launchpad in some way. And uh, it also allows you to host your own repositories. These are called PPAs that you might have heard of where you install software for Ubuntu that's not there in the Ubuntu repositories. So you can get additional software 
created by various launchpad users and over to community members in those PPAs. Uh, we can also uh, build snap packages, charm packages, Docker images, OCI images, and so on. So this is a brief overview of some of the things that Launchpad is capable of doing these days. And when it started development, uh, this is how Launchpad looked. Um, it very much looked like a site uh, which had the design of a site in 2006. Um, this is how Launchpad looked like in 2012. Yes. On the left side of the screen, you see the home page, and on the right side of the screen, you see the page for the Ubuntu distribution. And this is how Launchpad, the home page, looks like now. Uh, it's not entirely true. I kind of cheated here because uh, one of my colleagues worked on redesigning just the home page. The rest of the Launchpad still looks a lot like it was designed in 2012, but with some refinements to in some useful places. We are currently working on some overhaul of the UI, but uh, it's a large code base with a lot of legacy and history to deal with. So it's not something that we can do like a short term project. So this is going to take time. So if you have any feedback or suggestions, or if you want to contribute to some of this and make this happen, you can reach out to us. The talk said I want to talk about six interesting features. Uh, this was primarily targeted at people who at least knew what Launchpad was and also have used it at least a little bit. But I'll try to tail my talk in such a way that even those people who have not used Launchpad get a good sense of what Launchpad might allow you to do. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is Bug Tracker Federation. So Launchpad is a purpose built to handle aggregate distributions of software. This means uh, you often work with projects which are dependent on other set of projects or you want to distribute a collection of projects. So Launchpad excels in managing and providing a way to collaborate on this. Uh, Launchpad also is able to track and federate. Federation as in you don't need to have all the information in Launchpad itself for Launchpad to do useful things with it. So Launchpad can also reach out to external systems and then uh, have a way to do two-way communication in terms of uh, taking contributions, uh, uh, comments, discussions from Launchpad and then uh, syncing it with external sources and also doing the same in the opposite direction. So I'm not sure if the text is readable, but this is a page for a bug in, bug in Launchpad. It's a bug in an Ubuntu package called Zero MQ3. And uh, this is tracking the status of this bug in uh, Ubuntu, which is the one that's highlighted in yellow. It's also tracking the status of this bug in Debian, which is the upstream distribution of Ubuntu. It's also tracking the status of this bug in SUSE, which is a uh, Linux distribution, but it doesn't share any sort of commonality or history with Ubuntu or Debian, uh, just that it's a different distribution. All of these, only Ubuntu uses Launchpad, and SUSE and Debian do not use Launchpad, but Launchpad has a nice way to do that. So in that page below, you have a list of comments, and these comments correspond to comments that are being posted on the Open SUSE bug tracker or the SUSE bug tracker, and it also has a mix of inline comments from people using Launchpad. It also has the mix of comments from people using the Debian bug tracker and so on. Uh, it also has an easy way where you can reply to a comment on the Open SUSE bug villa right from Launchpad itself. So Using this, you can collaborate across distributions and across projects, and we don't even require you to use uh, Launchpad to do that. Launchpad is able to talk to external systems very well. If you're interested in this feature and uh, want to know more about it, uh, you can go take a look at our help documentation on this thing. It's called a bug watch, where it's able to look at bugs on external systems, bug trackers. This is also possible to do for projects and issue trackers posted on GitHub, GitLab, it works pretty well. And the next thing that I want to talk about is the Launchpad build farm. So to make uh, Ubuntu possible, uh, we need to build Ubuntu packages on uh, maybe tens of thousands of Ubuntu packages on multiple architectures that Ubuntu supports. So these days that might be uh, AMD64, which is your Intel and AMD, AMD based platform, the x 64 platform. Uh, you might also have heard of ARM, where 
a lot of new computers are starting to use uh, ARM processors of different generations. Your phones have ARM. Uh, your MacBooks, the uh, recent M1, M2, M3 MacBooks, they have ARM. And you require building those applications that you have in Ubuntu and the Ubuntu ecosystem on those architectures and Launchpad build farm provides the build infrastructure for them. So here is a quick, um, again, uh, sort of cherry pick stats. Launchpad has over 750 builders and the list is growing. And we currently support building on eight architectures. And this is also likely to increase uh, in, the near, in the near future. And we have thousands of daily builds. Uh, thousands is probably a very low number. Uh, I wouldn't be significantly off the mark if I say tens of thousands of builds every day. Uh, the most important thing is this is not an infrastructure that's available only for people who work for Canonical or people who work on Ubuntu and are a part of the Ubuntu ecosystem. It's also available for open source communities for free of cost. Uh, of course, since it's a shared resources, there might be some uh, constraints and uh, uh, operational challenges that you might run into, but it is still practically available free of cost. Uh, you can build dev packages for Ubuntu itself. You can build dev packages for PPAs. You can do build snaps, charms. You can build live file systems for Ubuntu. You can build OCA images that you can use on all the OCA compliant platforms like Docker and so on. And we are working on adding support for more artifact types. We are also working on adding support for additional architectures. Uh, RISC-V is a hot new architecture that everyone is hyped about. Uh, Launchpad has supported RISC-V builds for some time, but due to various operational constraints, we had it restricted uh, to specific uh, Ubuntu community members, trusted Ubuntu community members, and people who work for Canonical. Uh, but I'm happy to announce that uh, from the end of last year, RISC-V builds are generally available for everyone in the community. You don't require a Launchpad administrative enabled for you. So if you have software that you want to build it on this file, you can do it on Launchpad. Uh, to get the best results out of our build form, uh, it's in general a good idea to host things on Launchpad on the code hosting platform that Launchpad provides uh, because that's where the integrations work best, but it's not really required. You can still host your source code on external platforms like GitHub, GitLab, and other folders of your choice. And Launchpad, in most cases, will still be able to uh, work with those repositories and build artifacts with them. Um, one common use case of uh, having the source hosted outside Launchpad and still using Launchpad to build it is Snaps. I'm sure you've heard a lot about Snaps in some of the talks that have happened. There's a workshop uh, later today by Till. If you're interested, I would definitely recommend uh, participating and get a hands-on feel for how it is going to be. So to build snaps, you use a command called, you use a tool called Snapcraft. And let's say you have a HP laptop or a Dell laptop like I have. Typically, those laptops run on the Intel AMD x86 platform. And you want to build something uh, that runs on this file, or you want to build something that runs on Ah, uh, one common use of the Launchpad build infrastructure is to use the remote build facility in Snapcraft, where you can build all the local architectures uh, that you have access to on your own computer, and whatever architectures you don't have access to, like the esoteric uh, uh, architectures like PowerPC, uh, maybe uh, ARM, the older versions of ARM, uh, RISC-V, and, and any other architectures, you can dispatch those builds to Launchpad, Snapcraft will take care of building it on Launchpad and then giving you the artifact uh, for you to uh, test and use. You can also upload it to so. If you are working on charms, uh, uh, this is a topic that uh, Vashi talked about in her keynote uh, speech yesterday. Uh, you, there's also a charmcraft remote build command similar to the Snapcraft remote build, which allows you to do the same for charms. On a later note, I want to talk about recipe. So what is a recipe? So let's say you have a requirement where you say, I want to automatically build and upload or publish artifacts whenever code in my repository changes. The artifact might be a Debian package, a snap, a charm, and any other artifact types known to Launchpad. 
and recipes help you do that in a more or less automated way. There are some cases where some manual intervention might be required, but it's automated for most uh, practical part. So we have uh, recipes for source packages. These correspond to the Debian packages that go into Ubuntu or in your PPAs. You can also have snap recipes for automatically building snaps from your Git repository. You can also do the same for charm. And as we add support for more artifact types, we will also add support to create recipes for them. Uh, this screenshot is showing the recipe for a snap called LPCI. I'll talk a little bit about LPCI in a later part of the talk. And uh, this is something that automatically builds the snap uh, whenever we make code changes to the underlying repository. It builds it, uh, it probably runs the test suite, and then if everything passes, it automatically uploads it to the snap code. And it also allows you to customize the channels. Channel is a uh, uh, concept that you often will see with various stores that uh, are in the Ubuntu ecosystem, uh, the Snap Store, the Charm Hub, and other stores that might come up in the future. Uh, so it allows you to uh, automatically do a release for channel. So Edge is typically corresponding to a development channel, meaning you still have control over testing it and releasing to a channel where all the users of your software can consume it and use it. I'm going to quickly uh, show how to create a snap uh, recipe. So there's a page on Launchpad. Uh, the links on how to do that will follow in a later slide. But basically, you uh, uh, give a name for your snap recipe, tell who's the owner for it, uh, uh, also tell where to get the source code for the snap recipe from, and uh, whatever you define in your snap graph YAML file, which is the key uh, configuration file for snap builds, it will automatically pick up. After that, you can tell what architectures that you want to build. So uh, this list of architectures uh, is taken from a screenshot for the specific project. You might see more or less architectures when you you want to create a snap for your project. And then you can also create a source table uh, corresponding to the artifact that was built. And uh, once that is done, you can enable a toggle which tells your sham recipe or a snap recipe or a source package recipe to do automatic build when the branch changes. So you can turn that off if you don't want it. You can still make use of the recipe to do manual builds. But this is a convenience that I would generally recommend people to have. And uh, in case you want to uh, use dependencies for your builds from specific PPAs, you can specify those. And uh, you can also uh, pin the dependencies to use a specific pocket of Ubuntu. A pocket is a concept in Ubuntu where you have different streams of updates. There's a release pocket, there's an updates pocket, there's a security pocket. Uh, depending on what your use case might be, you might want to pick something else. Uh, for this build, uh, you will use some dependencies. Since it's a snap recipe, you will likely have to depend on a base snap or a core snap. So you might depend on core 18, core 20, core 22, and core 24 snap. So if you want to use a specific revision of those dependencies, you can pin those here. Uh, Snapcraft is a tool that you used to build the snap. So if you want to again pin to a specific revision or a channel of Snapcraft, you can do that. And you can do the same with SnapD as well, which is the uh, daemon which provides the snap, most of the snap functionality. And uh, like you can see here, there is a ability to automatically upload your snap to the store. Uh, you will have something similar for the Debian uh, source package uh, recipes and also for the charm. And then once you've registered a name for your snap package in the charm hub, you can specify it here and then you can configure which track, risk, and branch. So the combination of track, risk, and branch is called a channel in terms of the snap store terminology. So you can select this and once you do that, on automatic builds, uh, your snap, charm, and other artifact types will get built automatically and also uploaded uh, to the preferred channel of your choice, and then you can test and then it changes your user. Uh, the automation is just an optional feature. You can also trigger builds manually. Sometimes when you're setting up a recipe, you might need to tweak some configuration to get it working right. So Launchpad does offer the ability to like do manual fix as well. And uh, here is how you will go and create a snap recipe. Uh, 
the project is just a placeholder. So you will likely have to uh, replace the project with your project's name. Uh, it's also possible to create a recipe under your under your own user account, so you can uh, replace your username here as well. Uh, this is how you create the jam recipe, and this is how you create the uh, dev package recipe. Uh, you will notice a slight difference in creating a dev package recipe, where you know to we need where you need to go to the Git repository and the branch containing the branch in that repository before you can create a packaging repository. So this is a slightly different way to do it. And the next thing that I want to talk about uh, is the archive snapshot service. Uh, so Ubuntu is powering the development of, uh, uh, I mean Launchpad is powering the development of Ubuntu. So every package that's there in Ubuntu goes through Launchpad. So Launchpad does uh, have an understanding of the history of all these things. So using that, we've provided a point in time snapshot for users to use. And uh, Launchpad keeps track of every changes that happen, every change that happens in Launchpad uh, and Ubuntu. We have an application called LP Archive, which provides the web service that uh, provides snapshots. Uh, I just want to quickly talk about the use cases. So let's say you want to have a reproducible deployment, whether uh, it's a build, where you want to repeat the build, same, same build again and again, you would have uh, the ability to use it using the snapshot. Uh, if you want to go back and check what changed in history at a specific time, you can do that. You can also do structured update workflow where you can uh, test a snapshot, deploy it to all your computers, and then uh, test the next snapshot and then roll it forward and so on. So Microsoft uses this heavily in the Azure Cloud. And if you want to use this, I can recommend you to go to these URLs. There is some documentation on how to do it. There is already automatic integration with the app package manager, and you can use that to uh, make use of the snapshot service. Uh, if you want to know more about it, there's a nice talk from my former colleague uh, Colin Watson. So you can visit the talk on this link, or you can scan the QR code, where he goes into the technical details of the system. Uh, the next thing that I want to quickly talk about is the Launchpad CI. Uh, Launchpad has built in CI functionality similar to GitHub Actions that a lot of you might have seen and used. Uh, we have a runner uh, tool called LPCA that makes it possible. And uh, to uh, run launchpad CA builds, you need to have a configuration file that allows you to do this. It's called launchpad.yaml. And uh, it's generally available to everyone, but it's in early features, uh, early stage of development, which means it is likely missing a lot of features that you've come to expect from these CA systems. Uh, uh, this is a screenshot from the launchpad CI homepage where it tells you. How a configuration file might look like and how to run the build. And in the Launchpad code review UI, you will be able to see uh, the integration of the builds where it says, for this commit, these checks are passed. Uh, this is extensible via plugins. Uh, you currently have built in plugins for Conda build, Miniconda, PyProject build, Tox, and Golang, but it's easy to write plugins. And since it's an open source project, we welcome contributions. And uh, this contains the documentation for LPCI. The next thing that I wanted to talk about, the last thing, is the Launchpad API. Launchpad has a website that might look kind of dated, like it's from 2010, but Launchpad has a very powerful API. It provides a web service API, which uh, looks and behaves slightly differently when compared to the modern REST APIs, but it still works. Uh, there is an API documentation available at api.launchpad.net, which you can use. And I would recommend using the devel version of the API, which is the currently maintained one. Uh, uh, in most cases, whatever you do using the Launchpad UI, you can do it with the API, and then sometimes you can do things that uh, can't even be done with the API. So we also provide an official client library for this, uh, which you can install uh, for the Ubuntu repository for pip install. There's an interactive Python RDPL environment, uh, which you can install. Uh, and play around with it. Uh, Here is an example of using the Launchpad API to uh, get the name of a user using the API. Uh, here is an API example uh, that gets the most recent, uh, gets the title of three most recent questions by a user. Uh, uh, here is a slightly more important example where you create a Git repository, maybe modify its name, and then delete it all using the API. And uh, here are some examples, and then you also have API documentation. Uh, 
in case you want to use Launchpad and or you already use Launchpad, here is how you can reach us. We have IRC channels on uh, regular chat. We also have an answers feature on Launchpad where you can ask questions. We also have a matrix channel, which is currently a community channel, which means it's not an official support channel, but we still work around. And our team is currently growing. We are hiring for various roles. So you can probably scan these QR codes to uh, uh, take you to the job page. If you're interested, please feel free to apply. And yeah, that's my presentation. Do you have any questions? Please go ahead. Sir, as uh, as we use in GitHub, uh, there are pages uh, like to upload and deploy our static pages on GitHub. Mm -hmm. So, are there any alternatives in this Ubuntu that we can, uh, in this launchpad that we can uh, deploy our project and more than our static pages, like we upload our web pages or that launchpad? At the moment, launchpad does not have uh, something like GitHub pages, which is what you're referring to. Uh, but we've received requests like that in the future, uh, in the past, and I'm sure we'll be requests like, uh, for that in the future as well. Uh, if you can reach out to us and probably describe what you're looking for in terms of how you think it should work. Uh, like uh, the uh, uh, in our GitHub, we upload the static web pages, right? Uh, we can deploy it uh, right here. So, yeah, sure. Uh, just in Launchpad, we want that thing. Uh, we can deploy our web pages. Not only static ones, but the responsive and other big projects like. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would recommend submitting a feature request so you can go to bugs.launchpad.net slash launchpad and uh, fill out a bug and uh, we will take a look at it and probably add it to our backlog. Uh, I cannot uh, uh, at the moment tell you if and when we will get implementing it, but uh, you're not the first one requesting a feature like this, so we'll definitely consider it. For implementing Thank you. Go ahead. Please. So, in the recent event of like uh, where the arm builders were like over overly saturated with lots of lots of builds. So, in such events, let's say we want to help uh, at that moment with our machines so that uh, our machines can be used temporarily there for builds. So, what can be the uh, way we can add our machines also in the queue so that? Uh, so there are phases during Ubuntu development where you have a large number of builds coming into the build system, which cause all the other build types like delay, get to get delay. We run our build farm on an open stack infrastructure, which can be flaky sometimes and also cause a large backlog of builds. So this is something that we are looking to uh, address in the near time, uh, in the near future, where we want to allow people to bring their own uh, builders and add it to our launch infrastructure and then use those specifically for their own builds uh, similar to what has what's there in github and gitlab in terms of self-hosted runners but uh, we don't have it maybe one last question somebody asked uh, what i was saying is uh, is there any easy to follow guide uh, to self-host launchpad yeah so launchpad uh, when it started development was a proprietary application we open sourced it in 2009 and for the past 15 years it's been open source, but it's a complex stack and we don't have anyone else outside of Canonical to host and use Launchpad. But in the past year, we've actually spent quite a bit of effort uh, writing charms, which allow you to deploy Launchpad without having to require all the Canonical infrastructure niceties that we have. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone in the community has tried doing it, but we are in a much better place in terms of the documentation, the ability to configure and deploy charms and have an uh, instance of Launchpad that you post on your own infrastructure and use it for your own purpose. There will be still some parts that may not really work well, but for most practical needs, you should be able to uh, deploy Launchpad on your own infrastructure. Uh, you can probably come talk to me in person and we can visit the details. Uh, yeah. All right, then. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks for running. And can we show